Hi. In this episode of Prophecy 101, we're discussing prophetic gifts in relation to promises. God works in the body of Jesus with prophetic gifts, often to help get his sheep unstuck. The two main ways we get stuck are, one, sin, and two, failing to trust in specific promises in the way that we need to trust to apply and benefit from those promises. I always appreciate God's green light to trumpet the promises because I'm often equal time and balance to other ministries who focus more on the promises and rarely speak about sin. Praise the Lord Jesus. Today, we're talking about the promises. Good news. It's not about being someone else that's healing and being the truth. There is room at the cross for you. In the same way that our conscience is the voice in our hearts speaking to us when we sin, we each have an inner voice of expectation telling our hearts what we expect God will and should do for us. Unfortunately, while many people's consciences in Western Christendom are decently trained by the Ten Commandments, our inner voices of expectation are often trained by parents and teachers and friends and media telling us what blessings we should have in ways that create an entitlement mentality rather than a sober dependence on God's actual blessings and promises. Most of my early life, my inner voice of expectation was mostly in line with God's blessings to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the birds of the air and the beasts of the field and the fish of the sea. My parents reinforced that I was made in the image of God and that the sweat of my brow would bring my daily bread. In my earliest memories, I also had reasonable expectations of having a wife and children of my own. But since our inner expectations of blessings are widely variable, the work of the Holy Spirit often begins when he adds faith and conviction when we hear specific promises from the Bible. At any given time, God doesn't have a hundred sins to convict individuals about or a hundred promises for individuals to focus on. Bible teachers usually have a typical order of bringing these teachings on promises a few at a time. Shepherds have some skill and experience for naturally discerning, naturally discerning where specific people are in relation to God's promises and what God tends to do for people at a given stage of life and maturity. The prophetic gifts tend to get specific more quickly. On the sin side, that can be uncomfortable. On the promise side, when, when we win the wrestling matches with disbelief and with unbelief, our hearts usually melt with gratitude of God's love in these glimpses of heaven. I don't like the health and wealth gospel applied as a blanket. But there are moments of specific individual conviction by the Holy Spirit, usually pointing to a specific scripture. In 1995, I had completed my education and I became a volunteer farmer for a Christian ministry. The conviction of my wife and I was to finish your outdoor work, get your fields ready, then build your house. We took that as a prompting to focus on the farm work at the Christian ministry rather than our own family accommodations. We obeyed, totaling thousands and thousands of hours of effort over the next decade. But seven years into this deal, our 2,500 square foot home on five and a half suburban acres was completely paid for. We were debt free and the home was full of children in spite of losing twins in a miscarriage along the way. I plowed God's field. God built my house. Personal testimony as a subset of worship prophecy often comes next. Maybe it's a testimony at church or a small group about how someone else applied a given promise. One example for me 
was the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the gift of prophecy itself, I still think the Pentecostal crowd has some careless excesses, and I've never spoken in tongues. But I have asked and I have received regarding the gift of prophecy. Let me also mention testimonies about giving. Now, these testimonies often have some cliche like, you can't outgive God. You know, I hate these sowing seed sermons, but listen to the redneck Jesus professor. God has proven to me over and over again that it is more blessed to give than to receive. For me, worship prophecy through music is not usually focused on hearing a specific promise, but worship is a time where I receive the gift of faith to trust and really believe. Enough faith to act on the requirements to bring a specific promise to pass. We often already have some conviction in our heart of what promise God is speaking, but we're stuck thinking that we're not deserving. We never are deserving. That's not the point. We're also stuck thinking that good stuff like that never happens to me. Worship prophecy often confirms things as we trust and apply the needed faith in action. When worship prophecy is insufficient or when we resist it, teaching prophecy often comes next. That's what's happening now. Maybe you don't believe that the gift of prophecy is real or for now or for you. Maybe you, maybe you think you already have the limited measure of this gift that God has for you. Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. There's more. Not just in some general ethereal sense. Be specific. Lord, show me how to get my child unstuck. Lord, show me how to encourage this brother toward getting unstuck. Lord, show me how to get my church unstuck. Lord, show me where my unbelieving friend is stuck in coming to Jesus. Eagerly desire the greater gifts, especially prophecy. Okay, you got me. I admit it. I mixed in some preaching prophecy into the description of how teaching prophecy relates to God's promises. Teaching promises will mm, teaching prophecy will help you see directly from scripture with sound exegesis one what some specific promise of scripture really entails, two how that promise is not yet true in your life, three that you should ask for that promise, and four that you may be incomplete in your process of meeting specific requirements. The health and wealth crowd, they offer a lot of false teaching prophecies in this area. In contrast, consider the promise of self-control. Teaching prophecy would lay a biblical foundation for self-control with a number of related verses. It will show you signs that you may be lacking self-control in some areas and it will lay a path to progress through faith, goodness, and knowledge. Mark Ballinger has a YouTube channel with a lot of teaching prophecy laying out God's path to fulfilling the promise of marriage for single believers. It's very gifted teaching prophecy and gets real specific about things that are blocking people's path to fulfilling this promise. Revelation prophecy often means that the gig is up. God is patient and wants to bring his promises to pass. Maybe we've been stiff-necked in resisting God's promise. Maybe we've lacked faith. Maybe God wants us to apply faith. Or maybe in his sovereign grace and his love, he's just going to do it for us. Often, there's also a component of directing one's path. I recall when my girlfriend at LSU prophesied to me when I was senior in a, uh, a senior in college. She prophesied to me, God is telling me you will go to Brookhaven National Laboratory, you will meet the woman you're going to marry there, and you will marry her in August. 
It was my first exposure to Revelation prophecy. I thought it was just a weird way to get dumped, but everything happens just the way God told her, and my wife and I are still happily married 33 years later. Eagerly desire the greater gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. But we don't pick how the revelation comes or how the Holy Spirit instructs us to work it out. Prophesying promises is harder than confronting sin, especially when we reach the specificity of the revelation prophecy stage. Try prophesying to your son that you'd prefer not to pay for college at Ohio State, but if he takes the full scholarship at the University of Georgia, God will take care of him in graduate school. I was sweating that, we were sweating that one out to the last minute. Oh, but praise the Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus. We thank you that he died for our sins, that he rose from the dead, and that he ascended into heaven to send us your Holy Spirit. Lord God, we pray for the gift of prophecy and for increases in the gift of prophecy, especially as it relates to promises. Help us, Lord God. Speak to us. Help us to hear clearly. Filter out the noise. Help us to throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And help us to lay hold of your promises, all of them, as you wish to bring them to pass in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready for commencement? Elijah David Solomon Courtney. Become a man like me Though I may anguish with all of my might It would not postpone my eternity Lord, lead me boldly into that good day For cowardice is a robe I don't wear well Though I may pretend my sins are put away My flesh remains under some thorny spell Lord, show me virtues for my voyage home, for I am in a tempest-troubled sea. Help me avoid constantly pleasure dome, whose caves of ice so oft have tempted me. Lord, I pray the narrow way to know For where your lamb leads, I'll surely go So Lord, lead me gentle into that good night 
Lord, lead me boldly into that good day. Lord, show me virtues for my voyage home. For where your lamb leads, I'll surely go, surely go. 